So for this demo, I'm going to bring on Robert Miller from Flashbots. And a lot of you have heard about what's happening in the world of MEV, but you may not all know about the actual new things that Flashbots is working on. And to talk about Suave, please welcome Robert. OK, cool. So my name is Robert Miller. I work at Flashbots, a research and development organization focused on MEV, or minor extractable value. I'm a steward there. Today, we're going to be talking about Suave, so Flashbot's uh, vision for the future of MEV and the decentralized block building network that we're going to be making. I'll introduce the MEVM, and we'll look at uh, where Suave is and its release details in the future. Um, won't review this uh, at any more length, but again, talking about the MEVM, Suave, we'll begin by looking at the MEV supply chain, some of the challenges and why we are building Suave at Flashbot's. So the MEV supply chain is this framework that we use to think about how a transaction progresses before it's included on chain. Uh, it, it's a fairly basic framework. So you start with a user that has an intent. This is somebody who, as an example, wants to swap assets on chain. That intent gets taken by a wallet and turned into a signed transaction. Um, again, as an example, maybe the user uh, is creating a transaction on Uniswap. That uh, transaction, in this case, creates an arbitrage opportunity that a searcher is able to pick up, insert their own transaction back running the user and capturing the arbitrage to form a bundle of transactions, which is passed on to a builder that processes these bundles, creates a full block, and a validator eventually signs that and includes it on chain. Um, you don't need to know the, the details of that, but this is meant to demonstrate that Throughout this process, we have a couple different centralized pieces of infrastructure that are really complicated performing these off-chain actions that are really important to how transactions get processed on Ethereum and end users' outcomes. Uh, this is a, a problem because these MEV applications, searchers, block builders, are some of the most important infrastructure on Ethereum today. Uh, they decide where value lands. They decide which transactions get included on chain, who is getting how much value. Um, you have uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars that every single month that is paid back to users who are using things like order flow auctions. And actually 95% of blocks on Ethereum today, uh, you know, 19 out of 20, are created with this centralized MEV infrastructure uh, with a relatively small group of specialized actors that do that, about four builders making 80% of that. Um, so there's this uh, really critical infrastructure at the heart of crypto, at the, at the heart of Ethereum today, that is uh, you know, entirely centralized and running off-chain. And you can see here my atlas of MEV infrastructure that is holding up crypto. Um, and this is a, a, a challenge because while it mitigates a bunch of the negative effects of MEV that I, I haven't touched on here too much, uh, with things like my boost, keeping the, the validator set decentralized, uh, flashbots protect if you want to prevent front running, uh, this centralized infrastructure doesn't scale very well. You can't uh, just copy paste it, move it to all chains. Uh, it provides an avenue for censorship, which we've seen on, on Ethereum. It needs policing in order to you know, figure out who is a trustworthy actor in the supply chain. Uh, and it has centralizing pressures even, even more so than exists today. So what do we do about this? Why do we not just implement all this stuff as, as smart contracts is one question you might ask. Uh, and, and that's largely because Ethereum is limited in some specific ways, which is fine. It's, it's limited for the kind of things that it's doing. But as an example, it has no way to handle private information. If you are trying to get a transaction included on Ethereum, there's no way for you to send that privately to Ethereum before it's processed. Uh, you can't coordinate with actors within block time. So there's no way for you to uh, agree that someone pays you to background your transaction on Ethereum. Uh, you can't get really quick off-chain information like a Binance API if you're interested in conditioning your execution on that. And it's fairly expensive to do compute. So these reasons are why Flashbots is developing something that we call the MEVM, uh, which is this modification of the EVM that we're making with new precompiles, really specific powerful features for MEV use cases uh, specifically. As an example, taking a signed transaction, simulating it, and returning some information, or uh, building a block with a list of transactions that is input. And what's really interesting about this is that since we are modifying the EVM, 
you can actually program MEV infrastructure as smart contracts. You can write an entire block builder in Solidity, and I'll show you an example of that later, uh, within this like familiar programming framework that you know, Solidity, using Foundry, using the like standard EVM developer tooling that exists already. Uh, and this really lowers the barrier to starting writing this critical infrastructure right now, which is currently uh, a really high barrier to, to entry. And you get to benefit from the underlying decentralized infrastructure of the, the MEVM chain that, that we will deploy. Um, so our, our goal with the MEVM is to take every part of the MEV supply chain that exists today and offer it as a precompile so that in your smart contract you can uh, call those precompiles and compose them together and write really complicated MEV infrastructure to do things that you can't do on chain in Ethereum today. Um, I'll run you through kind of the architecture of how this looks like at a, at a high level and then an example uh, smart contract written with the MEVM. Uh, so the way that this works, the, the middle box here with three components inside of it is suave and it's got three main components for you to know about. Uh, we first have the MEVM chain uh, that I just described to you. It's this modified EVM chain with special precompiles for MEV use cases. And some of these precompiles call out to what we call an execution node. This is a off-chain node which is providing execution, um, as an example, uh, simulating transactions um, merging them together, building a block, inserting new, new transactions. And it's doing this uh, to provide credible and private compute off-chain that you don't want to do on-chain. These run in trusted execution environments uh, so that you can still trust their, uh, the, the outputs and the results of this compute even though it's not all being performed on-chain. And I'll, I'll double click and dig into that a little bit in, in one more slide if it went over your head by chance. Um, we have uh, a third component here, which is a confidential data store for private information that you don't want to store on chain that can be accessed by the execution node. So you've got uh, four main stakeholders, developers who are writing their MEV infrastructure as smart contracts, users who send uh, private data that they want included on chain and authorizing some contracts saying, hey, I, I'm okay for this block building contract or this uh, auction for my transaction to have access to my private data. Executors that are back running or arbitraging, doing uh, MEV things to try to execute people's bids. And the net result of Suave is it is creating blocks that are included on chain for networks like Ethereum or, or Rollup. Um, to, to dig into how execution nodes work a little bit more, you have developers that are defining in smart contracts uh, off-chain execution, which is performed in what we call an execution node. So if your smart contract says, hey, take all of these transactions, simulate them, and treat them according to this algorithm, then that's not, not actually performed uh, on-chain. Instead, all of that is performed in this execution node in a trusted execution environment, uh, like in SGX, where you know the code is running with some level of privacy and integrity. Uh, so this is a really scalable way to get private and confidential compute uh, uh, for MEV use cases. And the, the other thing that I would note is that uh, execution nodes, if a user permissions a certain smart contract, have access to private, private data. Um, so this is what a MEVM contract looks like. This is the Flashbots builder today, our block building algorithm written uh, with MEVM. You can see how it has a couple functions here that you, you normally don't have within Ethereum. So we are getting Ethereum mainnet state on that, that fifth line there, uh, the latest block state. We are simulating bundles of transaction, getting, getting the results. We uh, have a pending block there and we're simulating adding new transactions to it, seeing if they fail discarding them. Um, so these are the superpowers that the MEVM gives you uh, that, that you don't have currently on, uh, on Ethereum. And Lastly, on that second to last line, we are exporting the block, so we are making it available for Ethereum proposers to actually include on chain if they request it from Swaf. Um, and this is just one example of a use case. There's a, there's a ton of stuff that you can build. So any off-chain MEV infrastructure, we have the ambition of being able to support within the MEVM. So uh, other building algorithms, um, you know, 
that treat transactions differently. You could do pre-confirmations with MEVM. You could build Uniswap X on chain uh, with the MEVM. You could build CowSwap. You know, I won't I won't list it all there. Uh, but we're really excited about the other potential MEVM contracts that could be made. And what we're really excited about is uh, having really low barriers for other people to be able to deploy their own types of MEVM infrastructure on this and to have uh, these th different uh, applications composed together into something that is larger. So this is not a, a monolithic Flashbots builder that we're decentralizing. Instead, this is a, a platform where anyone can deploy their own applications uh, uh, and, and all these can compete and compose together in this open market. And we think ultimately that kind of positive sum uh, platform vision is what's going to result in, in better outcomes for users and better blocks for validators. Uh, briefly, what, what I'll touch on here is this, this isn't supposed to be made just for Ethereum. This is supposed to be a, um, uh, a, a platform that is building blocks for many different chains. So I've been using Ethereum kind of examples because that's where our roots are on, but uh, Suave and the MEVM works with many different types of environments. Uh, so you can have execution nodes that are running EVM, you can have them running Wasm, you can have whatever virtual machine that, that you want or what to support whatever chain you want. Uh, and the integration is, is relatively straightforward so long as your uh, chain has some way to listen to Suave for blocks. Uh, so this isn't an, an idea for us anymore. This is something that uh, is real. We're actually landing uh, blocks on testnet right now. So we landed our, our first Gorley block a couple days ago. Uh, on the left here, you can see some, some terminal stream of blocks being produced by Suave. If you're interested in seeing this proof of concept, you can feel free to, to catch me sometime this week. We'll be sharing more details online. Uh, and we're moving towards the Centauri release that I talked about in the introduction, which is a DevNet that we're going to be launching in the fourth quarter of this year, when anyone that wants to can deploy their own uh, MEV infrastructure as smart contracts on Suave. We'll share examples of what it looks like to take all of our centralized infrastructure, create them as smart contracts on Suave using the MEVM. Uh, and, and again, we're, we're targeting the, the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, initially, that's going to uh, our execution nodes won't be in SGX, they won't be in trusted execution environments, so they will require some trust in Flashbots. And the next release, which we call Andromeda, uh, will put those nodes inside of an SGX, so uh, the, the whole system will not have any trust in Flashbots. And at that point, we are looking to try to move on to other domains too, so if you're a roll-up, if you are uh, an, an L1 developer, please feel free to come talk to me about what it looks like to integrate to Suave. Uh, so that's all I have to say today. I got, I got a couple things. Feel free to reach out if you are one of these stakeholders, you're interested in working with us. We are also hiring quite a bit. Um, so hiring engineering managers, uh, developers, a, a lot of product-related roles. Uh, I'm Britt C. Miller on Twitter. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate it.